the Birth of the Kingdom with the Supernatural with your very own Apostle Andre Hamilton Smith. This is Bible Study Night, and we are excited about what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. Amen. For those who are out there and those who are in here, we, you know, we are in a season where the enemy is on every side, and he's trying his best to get us to stop what we're doing, and that's serving God. But tonight, I want to cut that off. I don't like that in the background. No, that's not going to work for me. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. it Make you sleep. You're like, mm. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, let's get to it. I want to talk about sabotage tonight. Get your pencils and paper out. Let's jump in. Uh, I got 30 minutes for each segment, so I got to hurry up. Amen. We give God glory tonight. We give him glory tonight. Come on. We give him glory tonight. Open your mouth and give him some glory. Amen. We give him glory tonight. I want to say to you, allow God to guide you continually. Allow God to guide you into all truth. Allow God to guide your eyes. Help. You know, sometimes we got to keep our eyes on God. And that's hard when you live in a world where very seldom people are eyes are on God. But have you ever felt like you're being watched or pushed to do things you don't want to do by a powerful evil force of sabotage? Have you ever felt that way? Oh, uh, come on, y'all. Have you ever felt like, you know, God, I'm trying to do this, and it don't seem like nothing working out? Do you often postpone things to the last minute? Do you operate with fear? Do you start projects and never complete them? And because, the reason why is because the spirit of sabotage. And sometimes you, you feel weak, but tonight we're going to pray against that spirit of sabotage. We're going to pray against these, these spirits, forces that are trying to stop us from moving forward. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon, no weapon of sabotage. It will not prosper. It will not work. Hallelujah. But we got to keep our eyes on God. Say so tonight, say, God, help me to keep my eyes on you. Help me to keep my focus on you. Help me to stay engaged with you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. You know, when you first get engaged and somebody asks you to marry, you're just all excited. Or, or when you meet somebody that you think is a potential, you just can't wait till he call you. You can't wait. That's how God wants us to be with him. This is how we don't fall for the sabotage. Sometimes we find ourselves doing things to please even others if they, look, if they, look, sometimes we do find yourself doing things to please others even if they hurt you. Do you, look, do you most of the time tell yourself things like, I'm good, I'm not good enough, or if things going bad, I'm good. you just going along, but that's not really how you feel. And the enemy is creeping in with sabotage. So tonight I want to talk to you, amen, let's get to it. Nehemiah chapter 4, let's get there right quick, hallelujah, we pray against the spirit of sabotage tonight, we concentrate on you God, our focus on you, we cancel every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus, Nehemiah chapter 4, amen, Nehemiah overcame the spirit of sabotage which was in the form of great opposition through ridicule, anger, mockery and continued threats of war to try and stop the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. Now, we all heard about the wall of Jerusalem, how Sanballat and Tobiah tried to stop him. They, they ridiculed him. They, they mocked him. They tried, they tried to distract him. Do you know that sabotage can come in the spirit of, of distraction, mockery, <laughs> where, where you're thinking, God, nobody seemed to be on my side. Everybody talking about me. Nobody, nobody's really with me. Are we here tonight? We see that Nehemiah and his team worked very hard to overcome the opposition by continuing staying focused and praying. One of the things that we're going to have to do if we're not going to fall for the sabotage of the enemy, amen, is what? Focus and pray. And we say it, but I don't know about you, but I find myself getting busy with everything I need to do to evolve. Y'all get it tonight? I got to go work out. I, I got this job. I got this assignment. I got this going on. And sometimes we're not, what, keeping our eyes on God. We're not praying. Because, and we'll do the drive-through prayer where I'm driving to work. <laughs> I'll pray or, or on my lunch break. But to tap in and lay before the Lord and cry out to him. 
Sometimes we don't make time for that, or sometimes it seems impossible in the world we live in today. Well, that comes in the form of a sabotage, where that spirit is using distraction to sabotage. Tonight, I want to tell you that let's not allow the spirit of sabotage to sabotage our ministry. Let, let's not let the spirit, of, come on, are we here tonight? Because I don't know about you, but I felt like, God, is this going to work out? The enemy wants you not to believe that it's going to work out for you. Can you imagine the beginning of whatever you're starting, and before you get to the complete stage of it, you think everything is going through your mind. I remember hearing Mark say, I guess, well, when it's going to happen? Because <laughs> we're that in between where the enemy whispers. Are we here tonight? Um, don't have my phone, so somebody read Nehemiah chapter 4 for me. Verse 1? Verse 1, yes. Now, when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged. And he jeered at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Now look at this. He asking them, he calling them evil Jews. And these people came to restore the wall. Go ahead, keep, keep going. Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones? of the heap of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, yes, what they are building. If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Mm -hmm. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Mm -hmm. Do not cover their guilt, and let not their sin be blotted out from your sight. For they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Let me say this to you. The spirit of sabotage would bring a laziness and a sluggard spirit on you where you won't have the mind to do what God called you to do. Now, in that instance, he had the mind to work. We got to have a mind to serve God. We got to have a mind of what salvation is. We got to have a mind, a mind. That means a will. Ooh. The will to serve God, the will to seek God. The, that, that will got to be there. That mindset got to be there. Come on. It said they have a mind to work. No, nobody could stop. When you got a mind to do something, nobody can stop you from doing it but you. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we got to pray, and that's when we pray tonight, that we have a mind to complete the assignment. A mind to not only start but finish. A mind to be continuous in the things of God. Come on, you got to have that mind, and that's where the focus in prayer come from. Because when you're not focused and praying, the, the, the mindset of what you should have, you don't have. My God. That's why God don't want you to make anything, anything a God other than him. Because anything other than him don't have the mind to serve him. My goodness. A job not going to tell you leave the job to go serve God. <laughs> Ooh, my God. You at the, you at the party, they, got to, they don't want to hear nothing about God. That's why he said he don't want you to make these things gods in your life. Because it's not going to tell you to serve God. It's not going to give you the mind. That's why the Bible says be separate, separate from these things. Because these things don't give you the mind of Christ. So in order to have the will, you got to have the mind. Come on, somebody. Keep going. Verse 7. But when Sambalah and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem, to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. In Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. 
There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemy said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. At that time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, you must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people by their clans, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Keep going. When our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. Verse 16. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, and half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, the work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall, far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Mm. Our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Stop right there. You have to be willing to labor. Amen. The spirit of willing to labor in the spirit. You said they, they labored, they toiled all night to what? To build this wall. So we, we're talking about sabotage and how do sabotage come in? First, number one, you don't have the mind of Christ and the will of work. Number two, you're not willing to labor. The more you in scriptures, the more you're, you're praying, the more you're fasting, that's laboring in the spirit. In the Old Testament, this is called tearing. We hear the older folks say tearing in the spirit. Tearing means you're laboring. That means you're worshiping, you're praying, you're decreeing, you're declaring. That's what you're doing. That's what keeps the sabotage spirit out. So when you're not focused and you don't have the will and the mind, the enemy will come in, amen, and cause you, look, and we tarry with Facebook. <laughs> we tarry with uh, uh, different uh, media platforms. We tarry with boyfriends. They, they can be taking us through all kinds of changes, but we're going to stay there. But with God, he wants you to tarry in his sight. He wants you to remain present with him. He wants you to be steadfast. He wants you to look, to, to willing to stay. To read that scripture one more time. Go back one verse. So we've labored. We got to labor in the spirit. Now we take, we, we remember now, they, look, Sambal and Tobiah was really trying to stop them. They were ridiculing them. They were mocking them. He was even trying to get them to come off the wall. Nehemiah would not. We got to be determined. And guess what? It's, in the ministry, it, it, it can't be just the head. It got to be the body too. And I'm talking about sabotage tonight because I want you to know that the enemy, you don't even know the enemy sabotaging you. Let them do it. It said that they labored. They, they, there was a they, there was a group. Ah, oh, come on. He wasn't by himself. He wasn't building this wall by himself. They put their hands to the plow. Keep reading. of the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. So neither I nor my brothers nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me 
None of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. Each one kept their weapon at their right hand. Look at this. Read the verse before again for me. The one that you just, the one before you read this one. I also said to the people at that time, let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. Mm, a guard for us by night and what else? Labor and uh, labor. labor. Amen. We have to understand that the Bible talks about guarding our hearts. We got to guard what God has given us. We got to guard it, guys. Come on now. Because some of us, we, we will we'll be here today or tonight, and then we go right back out there, and it, it's like we just open for the enemy. I'm down for whatever. You got to guard. What, what are you trying to achieve in this hour? What are you trying to do? You got to guard it. We got to guard it with all your heart. While you're laboring for, the, for whatever God is putting in your heart, you got to guard it as well. You can't get Now, let's talk about that garden, and we're going to close this session out. But what I want to tell you is in that guarding, these are the couple things that you need to do. Number one, you do not share what God has given you, the vision, until he, you are led to. You don't share the vision. You don't share what God has given you. You don't share it. That's how you guard your heart. You keep it. Number two, you pray over what God has given you. Whatever you are uh, um, praying or tearing for, whatever you are wrestling in the spirit for, whatever you're doing, you need to pray. You need to war it. So say if, example, I'm looking for a new job. Well, I need to write that vision down, and every day I need to be declaring that. I need to be getting scriptures that go along, God, you favor me, and I war over what God has promised me. Amen? Amen. Whatever vision, what are we trying to, like the fire conference, we ought to be praying over it. God, we thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the increase. You come against every sabotaging spirit in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is personally you're trying to achieve, put it in prayer before you start and pray th throughout it. Amen. That you achieve it, that you're able to, to do it. Amen. Some of us are going back to school or taking different things. You need to be praying over that thing. Because so, immediately the enemy would try to bring all these different things to stop you. Oh, I can't do it. I don't know. About they ain't doing it. Whatever you believe in God for, guard it. Guard it. And how you guard it. Lord, don't let me lose vision on, or insight on what you've given me. Some of us will get right in the middle or right at it and we'll just stop. Because it gets too hard. Or, it's, 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 look, it's, it's overtaking my YouTube time. But we got to balance and prioritize. You got to guard it. What is it in your heart now that you're trying to achieve or want to get to? You got to guard it. You can't let it overwhelm you. I come against that sabotage spirit tonight. You got to understand Nehemiah was so powerful in his own right because he didn't even allow what they were saying. They were, they were sending letters, sending servants, and people tried to get him to come off that wall. He would not come down. I said, that man was a man on a mission. And we got to be men and women of God on a mission. Like tonight, I'm telling you, don't allow the external to determine what God says he's going to do and how he's going to do it. Your perspective, your focus needs to be on God. What are you praying about in this hour? Because sometimes you, you know, and I hear this, it's like God will give you what you need to do, but you got all these outside forces of interference. And sometimes you're praying, but you're not praying about the right thing. You're praying, but you're not praying about the right thing. So now you got this over here and that over here, but God is saying, what, what have I put in your hand to do? You, we need to pray over that. We need to tarry on that. We need to declare over that. Stay focused. And so I start off by saying the most important thing to not allow the, the spirit of sabotage to come in is what? Focus in prayer. You got to. And that focus in prayer will keep you, keep your will in check. The will to work, the will to tarry, the will to stand. Come on, somebody. That would also keep you guarding what you have and not allowing nobody to come stealing.
take it. The Bible said it'll become what? The steal, kill, and destroy. What is it that you know that God has given you a valuable thing? It's priceless. The enemy is constantly trying to steal, kill, or destroy it. The will to serve him is valuable. The will to be utilized by him is valuable. The will to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth and righteousness is priceless. And the enemy knows it. So he brings the spirit of distraction, the spirit of, of uh, just busyness and all kinds of stuff to get us away from the very thing we need to focus on. So tonight I want you to understand that what you're doing is valuable. And because we can't put a price on it, and because it's a heaven's bank, sometimes we can't see it. So we look at it as not as valuable because I got to do this and I got to do that. And God, listen, let me tell you, and the enemy knows if he can get you to be busy and put more into what, in what works than faith, he got you. Because there's nothing like being wealthy and being saved. I don't care what nobody says. When you're saved and you got the Holy Spirit, you got peace and a sound mind. You got a praise and a joy that's unspeakable, unexplainable. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing like it. Don't let nobody fool. The enemy knows it's valuable. Can't you see it? Just the other day, my husband said he was looking, ah, da, da, ba, yeah, he was looking at some um, article and it was saying another millionaire killed himself, right? Billionaire killed himself. We got to understand being saved. Don't allow us because listen, we take it lightly, but the spirit of sabotage in his friends, unbelief and antichrist, and all these spirits come in to kill, steal, and destroy. So you can have the best of both worlds. <laughs> You can. He, he, listen, he placed us in earth and then turned around and gave us dominion. Oh, let me say it backwards. He gave us dominion and then placed us in earth to operate in dominion. Is that not the best of both worlds? But what we do is we don't know how to, to prioritize the earth in the spirit. We don't know how to prioritize. So what we do, is, it's just like drugs. We taste a little drug and sell us. And I'm not encouraging nobody to smoke no weed or do no drugs now. That's not what I'm saying. But a vacation once a year versus you doing it every day, that's the same way we do spiritual in the natural. Instead of us take this natural realm to take dominion, we just stay in the natural realm and don't take dominion. And believe it or not, unsaved or saved, the enemy going to try you. Well, the enemy, already, you already belong to him, but he's going to keep trying to push you further out. Come on, somebody. Father, we pray against the spirit of sabotage tonight. That we don't be distracted by the enemy. That we be steadfast and focused, rooted and grounded in you. Father, have your way in us, God. We thank you for the mind of Christ. We don't take it for granted. We thank you for the fight in the press, God. We thank you for the faithfulness, God. We thank you for being tied. Thank God to be, for being a tied pair tonight. Thank God that you're helping building the kingdom tonight. Come on, thank God that you're putting time in the kingdom. Don't allow the enemy to come in and sabotage the greatness that God has put in you. Come on, open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. See, he don't want you to tell God, thank you. Hallelujah, because he couldn't use anybody, but he chose you. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank him that you got the mind of Christ. The enemy wants you to think, oh, I should use it for this and that. No, you should use it for just what you're doing and let God give you this and that. God likes to set you up when you're all about him. So thank God for being utilized to serve, utilized to build the kingdom. Ooh, don't, don't, don't. It might look better on other people that they not, but baby, they ain't better. I don't care how it look or sound, they not better. Ooh, my God, tonight. Father, I pray tonight 
that whoever out there in TV land, amen, YouTube, whatever platform you are, that you make Jesus Lord. Don't allow the spirit of sabotage to overtake you where you don't appreciate the God in you. God bless you tonight. Live in purpose as well as on purpose. This is your very own Apostle Andre Hamilton Smith. You be blessed. Have a good night. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand. Praise.